Kyrene Dunn, Fred McMurray Show. Starring Irene Dunn as Susan. And Fred McMurray as George. Together in a gay, new, exciting comedy adventure. Bright Star. Fred McMurray Show, starring Irene Dunn as Susan Armstrong, owner and editor of the Hillsdale Morning Star, and Fred McMurray as George Harvey, her ace reporter. One would expect news to be the business of a newspaper, but sometimes it's not always so. Sometimes Susan Armstrong speaks of other things, and this is one of those times. And the other thing of which she speaks is, uh, well, listen for yourself. It's going to be a box supper, George. Surely you've heard of box suppers before. Oh, vaguely. You know, each girl packs a supper for two in a fancy box. And these boxes are auctioned off. Mm-hmm. The young man who buys the box eats his supper with a girl who packed it. And then spends the evening dancing with her. Well, this could get a little complicated, couldn't it? I mean, uh, suppose a stranger gets a girl's supper. What does her boyfriend do? Well, generally, he goes outside and beats his head against a tree. <laughs> oh, now, no, the smart girls tip off their boyfriends beforehand. Uh, so I'll just tell you. Oh, you say this is conducted as an auction. Hmm? That's right. That's what makes it so interesting. Well, just so I can plan, uh, how much did your supper bring last year? Oh, well, I guess I was luckier than others. Uh, mine brought $55. Yipe! Well, what's wrong with that? With practice care, I could eat supper for a couple of months on 55 bucks and maybe sneak in a few lunches. Are you trying to say that a supper and an evening of dancing with me is not worth $55? Uh, well, not since you put it that way. Well, I should think as much. Now, be sure to remember this. My supper box will be wrapped in red paper with a golden bow on top. Red paper, golden bow. Mm-hmm. Check. All right, then. Tomorrow night at 7 at the Elks Hall. And be sure not to eat anything beforehand, George, because I'll pack plenty for both of us. Well, don't worry, Susan. I won't be able to afford anything beforehand. And maybe not for a long time after. You wanted to see me? Uh, yes, Sammy. You know, Sammy, every time I see that in... Miss Susan, for the life of me, I don't see why you don't put all this food in one big box and let me stay home. You've been staying home too much, Patience. It'll do you good to get out and have yourself a gay evening. Mm -hmm. Now, let's see if we have everything. It's all there. Roast turkey, potato salad, coleslaw, pickles, ham sandwiches, uh, three kinds of cheese, roast beef sandwiches, cookies, and chocolate cake. Good. George will enjoy every mouthful. You figuring on him buying yours? Well, he better. I gave him full instructions yesterday. Last year, your supper went for $55. I know. Does he know? He knows. Well, that was no earthquake you felt. That was George Harvey shaking in his boots. Oh, you're wrong, Patience. 
George won't fail me. He knows how much this means to me. Maybe. But you know you can't buy these suppers with an IOU. It's cash on the line. Now, where's that red paper and the gold ribbon? Right here. I want to make this as attractive as possible. Bidding will be real spirited. You're making it mighty tough on George. Now, you just forget, George. Everything will work out fine. How are you going to decorate your stations? I'm going to wrap mine in an old wet blanket. So when the guy who buys it sees me, he won't be disappointed. Oh, there you are, George. I was wondering if you were going to be on time. Uh, you know me. Mentioned food and I was there an hour ago. Oh, uh, hello, patient. Hello, some shindy. Yes, yeah, quite a turnout. Ought to be a great success. Mm-hmm. Of course it will. It always is. And before I forget it, George, that was a wonderful thought of yours, inviting Sammy. Oh, is he here? Uh, I've been looking for him. Well, of course he's here. Uh, uh, where is he? But he's around somewhere. Uh, George, um, the red paper and the gold bowl. Remember? Yes, yes. Got my eye right on it. Well, uh, what do you know? There's Sammy over there. I, uh, I'm i going over and see how he's getting along. Yes, the bidding's going to start pretty soon. Uh, maybe it's better if we're not seen together until afterwards. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's a good idea. I'll, uh, I'll see you later. Sammy. Good old Sammy. I knew I could depend on you. Hi. This looks like it's a lot of fun, especially all those suppers up on the table. Yes. Uh, slip me the 50, Sammy. What 50? You don't have to blab it all over the place. The 50 you promised to lend me this morning. You haven't. Well, what did you do with it? All I brought was ten. Well, okay, if that's the way you feel about it. Now I know who my true friends are. Well, I want to be a friend. Well, then but... give me the ten. That'll help a little. I told Patience I was going to buy her supper. I can't hurt her feelings. Nothing could hurt her feelings, and nobody ever buys her supper. And besides, I'm hungry. Oh, hi, boys. Get her out. Now we've got a carload of delicious box supper. Each one packed by a time and a beautiful girl. They're starting, Sammy. This is your last chance. Give me the ten. You can have what's left over after I buy my supper. Now, here's a beautiful box. All done up with pink ribbons and tissue paper. All right. What am I doing, boys? What am I doing? help you, Mr. Harvey, but I was lucky to get this for $10. I'm sure you and Patience will be very happy, Sammy. I hope you have a long and happy supper together. Oh, you should see what's in it. Turkey, ham, roast beef and cake. Oh, stop sounding like the little glutton you are. Now, here's a beautiful supper box, boy. All done in bright red with a gold bow on top. And I just know Loads of goodies. Is that Miss Armstrong? Well, what does it matter now? With my dough, I couldn't afford a sardine sandwich packed by a Ubangi. All righty, boys. Now we'll load all together at once. Somebody start. What am I doing? Uh, $5. $5. Good, I'll bear the gentleman. And probably a hundred one, too. I've got $5. Do I hear six? Do I hear six? Fifty bucks! Oh, oh. Fifty dollars. Now, there's you, the gentleman, who really is hungry. I've got a headache. Going once for 50, going twice for 50. Go to the tall gentleman with the blonde hair. Well, that's all right, Sammy. Now, here's a... Well, here's a nice little box. It's a... Well, this girl probably didn't care for trimming, but oh, she got some butcher paper. Maybe her father's a butcher. I don't have to tell you boys what that means these days. Will somebody say uh, a dollar? Hey, there's your chance to get something to eat. Uh, why not? I'll go to charity anyway. Well, will somebody say a dollar? Uh, one dollar. Uh, go to the handsome gentleman over there. Uh, one dollar. You better go up and get your box. Yeah, but it won't make much difference. If she's a butcher's daughter, it's probably filled with raw meat. I'm going to go find patients and see if we can start eating. Well, Sammy, I see you kept your promise. Yeah, patients, I sure did. I hope I got my ten bucks worth, too. Oh, mercenary little rascal, aren't you? This is the first time I ever paid ten bucks for a supper with a girl. Well, you got the supper all right, but I don't know about the girl. Well, as I always say, girl or woman, what's the difference? As you grow older, I'm sure you'll learn. I, I noticed most of the fellows took their girls outside. 
beat their supper, I guess. <laughs> My, you're learning fast. How about it? It's a little cool for outside evening. And besides, I have a hunch that we should join Miss Susan and George. Sort of a family picnic. Oh, but they won't be eating together. They each got different partners. That's what I mean, Sammy. This is a charity affair. And we could practice a little charity by saving them from their own mistakes. Come on. Let's saunter around and see if we can find them. Talk fast, George Harvey. You've got a lot of explaining to do. Look, Susan, it wasn't my fault. Did you get a look at that character who bought my supper? Well, not a very good look. Well, I did. Well, have you talked to him? Not yet. He's looking for me now with the silliest grin on his face. Oh, George, how could you do this to me? Well, it was just a question of money. I, I didn't have enough. But I told you yesterday. I gave you plenty of warning that it might be around $50. Well, I simply wasn't able to raise it. Raise it? Why should you have to raise it? I pay you a good salary. What do you do with your money? Some people collect stamps. I collect yachts. Who knows what I do with my money? Look, Susan, why don't we ease out of here? Maybe nobody'd miss us. I, I've got four dollars left, and we could blow ourselves up with hamburgers. Well, you know I couldn't leave. I'm on the committee. You know it. Oh, yeah. Well, then I guess you'll have to eat with a boy who came loaded. Oh, dear. But what about afterward, when he wants to spend the whole night wrestling around the dance floor? Well, by that time, I'll think of something. Too bad you couldn't have thought of something before. Look, Susan, as long as we're in this mess, let's try to have the best time possible, shall we? Well, there isn't much else we can do. Unless that brilliant mind of yours figures out something. No, that brilliant mind of mine is working already. There's, can't you hear the gears? I can, and that's what I'm worried about. They sound a little stripped. stars Irene Dunn and Fred McMurray and the second act of our story. Susan, quite put out with George for not buying her box supper, decides to make the best of things. Well, there comes a time at every supper social when boy with box meets girl. That time is now here for Susan. Oh, I've been looking all over for you, Miss Armstrong. Oh, have you? I'm so sorry. I'm the fellow that bought your supper. Uh, yes, yes, I, I see you are. I'm William Hopkins. You can just call me Willie. Oh, well, thank you, Willie. When I saw you coming in, I made up my mind I was going to buy your supper, no matter what it cost. I said, there's the babe for me. That's what I said. But well, you're certainly a free spender, I'll say that. Oh, money don't mean nothing. I make 25 bucks a day, and I can double that with overtime. Oh, what do you do? Uh, for me, I'm a, I'm a bulldozer. You're a what? <laughs> well, I ain't. What I meant was I run a bulldozer. Oh, oh. You ought to come out sometime and see me shoving that old dirt around. Well, it sounds very intriguing. Well, I guess we might as well find a place to squat and start giving our molars a workout. <laughs> uh, yes, I suppose that would be an idea. Hey, what are you gawking at? Oh, that tall man over there. And that blonde heading his way. You know the guy or something? I used to. But I'm not so sure I will after tonight. <laughs> Huh? Well, uh, I'm not sure. Uh, am I? Well, that's my supper you bought. Oh, how oh, it is. Uh, how do you know? I'm Wanda Finnegan. Well, uh, how do you do, Miss Finnegan? Uh, I'm George Harvey. You can call me Wanda, George. Oh, that's nice, uh, Wanda. Yeah. Well, what do you do? No, I'm a reporter with the Morning Star. Gee, do you get to see gangsters and murder and stuff? Well, right? not very often. Uh, Hillsdale's a peaceful town. Yeah, Hillsdale's a dump. I suppose you could look at it that way. Oh, I like a big city. You ever been in New York? Oh, yes, yes. I've lived there for years. Dang. Maybe we could be in New York at the same time sometime? No, could be. 
strange things happen. Yeah, ain't it the truth? Yeah. Well, strange things are always happen to me. <laughs> well, I guess we might as well put on the feed bag. Huh? Oh, yes, the feed bag. Uh, well, any special place you'd like to graze? Huh? Oh, nothing, it's just a figure of speech. Uh, well, uh, you lead, Wanda. I'll follow. <laughs> Well, Sammy and I figured we all might just as well eat together and make it sort of a picnic. Well, of course, Patience, why not? I don't suppose we all know each other, though, do we? No. This is Willie Hopkins. Hi, oh, how are you, Willie? Patience, Sammy, George Harvey. How do you do? Uh, this is Wanda Finnegan. Pleasure, I'm sure. <laughs> well, uh, pull up chairs, folks, and let's get settled. That's a good idea. Hey, you sure know how to pack the grub, sister. Get a load of this spread. <laughs> well, you go right ahead and enjoy it, Willie. Well, what are you waiting for, George? Huh? Well, dig in. Oh, yes, the uh, the box. Help yourself. Thanks. Now you. Yeah, don't mind if I do. Sandwiches, huh? Mm, pickle sandwiches. Uh, pickle sandwiches? Lots of vitamins. They're real good for you. Oh, it's very interesting. I know a sand hog, and his wife always fetches him pickle sandwiches. They're healthy or something. That's what I said. Hey, look, the band's getting ready to give... How's about you and me making it with the fancy foot like Oh, baby? but your supper, Willie, you're not half through. Oh, I'm loaded for now. Do me good to shake it down and make some more room. Come on. George Harvey, I hate you. I'm working on a plan. Well, what are we waiting for, big boy? Oh, you want to dance, sir? Oh, I didn't come here to pick right. Uh, well, my pleasure, Wanda. Shall we? <laughs> Willie, now that we're alone for a minute, I'd like to talk to you uh, man to man. Yeah? Willie, just look at that wand over there, the girl I'm with. Isn't that a beautiful doll? You think so? Look at that hair. Golden, wavy, silky. What more could a man want? That ain't a wig on my dish, Buster. Oh, you mean Susan? Oh, her hair's all right. A little on the mousy side, wouldn't you say? I never went out with no mouse. Uh, yeah. Look at that Wanda's figure, Willie. I'll miss America if I ever saw one. Uh, Willie, how about it? You take Wanda for the rest of the evening, and I'll relieve you of your burden. Okay? You think I'm nuts or something? Well, uh, no, no. I, I, I was just hoping. But, Mr. Harvey, I don't like to do that. You're not only doing this for me, you're doing it for Miss Armstrong, too. She'll be grateful and you'll save her from a horrible evening. You sure? My word of honor. There. He's alone now over by the refreshment stand. I'll get going, quick. This is the darndest party I've ever been to. Can I talk to you, Mr. Willie? Why, you sure can, Nipper. What's on your mind? I want my mama to take me home, now. Well, sure, son. You just take me to your mama and I'll tell her what you said. Who is your mama? You keep dancing with her. Susan, your mother? Ever since I was a little boy. Well, I can't hardly believe it. A beautiful gal like her, Mary. Hey, how come you don't get your father to take you home? My father? Yeah, then your mother could stay here and have some fun for the rest of the evening. My father? Oh, hold the phone. It just come to me. I bet I know your old man. Oh, I don't think so. Sure, that's it. He didn't have the nerve to come out and admit it. Tried to make a switch like a yellow dog. And him romancing that blonde right in front of his wife and child. He knew I wouldn't swap and he didn't want me to. Why, that dirty rat. Who? Your father. My father. Son, you're going home. But first I'm going to teach your old man a lesson he ain't ever going to forget. Hey, you. Hmm? Oh, uh, hi, Willie. Uh, something I can do for you? I gotta see you outside. Come on. Yeah, but I don't do... I said come. Yeah, I, I believe you did it there. Uh, something on your mind, Willie? I just want to talk, that's all. Outside? I like to talk outside. Yeah, well, there's, there's probably more room out there for your voice. Okay, Willie, now that we're outside, uh, what did you want to talk to me about? When a guy's got a good-looking, sweet dame for a wife, I say he's lucky. 
Yes, yes, I would class that as a very astute observation, Willie. We're in perfect agreement. But I don't know... When a guy's got a son, he's even luckier. Well, you've got a perfect score so far. There's nothing like a boy to carry on in your footsteps, but... And some lousy heels will go flirting around right in front of that sweet wife and that little kid. Yes, yes. I dare say there is that type, Willie. But I got a name for guys like that, but I won't even say it. Yeah, I know what you mean. I appreciate your discretion. But I also got a couple of fists for guys like that, and I'm going to use them. Well, bully for you, Willie. The sanctity of the home needs such defenders. Stout fellow. You want to take off your coat? Take off my coat? Well, don't you find it a little chilly out here? Okay, then you can take it dressed up. Yeah, but I don't... (laughs) Get me, (laughs) bro! You going to lay out here on the grass all night? Mm-hmm. Oh, that you, Patience? Can't you see? Oh, not very well. I didn't see you around, and I figured something must have happened. What did happen? Willie went berserk. Oh. All at once, he got flaky and tried to kill me. Oh, good. I was just trying to get Susan away from him so I could take her home. Oh, he's in there hovering over like a mother hen. You say she wants to go home? Well, I hope so, but how are we going to get rid of that gorilla without the police? I'll handle that. I think she should go home anyway. Now, you just stay where you are, and I'll send her out. Well, be careful, patient. The guy's dynamite. When I get started, I'm a little like TNT myself. <laughs> Miss Susan, time to be on our way. George is waiting outside. My patience, you astound me. I'm really not ready to leave. I'm having a wonderful time. In fact, I'm planning to go out tomorrow to watch Willie shove some dirt around. See there? Look, sister, why don't you sneak off somewhere and get real lost? Why don't you button that big fat lip of yours before I forget I'm a lady and slap you into the rear? Patience, patience! George is outside on his back. This, this missing link almost killed him. Willie, is that true? Well, now, baby, it was just a plain case of duty and I done it. When a guy cheats on a wife like you, I figure out... A wife? Are you out of your mind? Oh, ain't that kid over there your son? Sammy, my son. Good heavens, you must be insane. That's the way George sees it. Miss Susan, you better get out of here now and take him home. Yes, patient, yes, of course. Oh, poor George, it's all my fault. You know something I don't like, you. I'm going to count to ten... And if you're still here, I'm going to use your head for a bowling ball, your legs and arms for pins, and I'm going to make the most beautiful strike you've ever seen. Well, this day must be gone. Real gone. Hey, what became of George? George is in good hands now that he's got your claws off him. Hey, I ain't so sure I like that crap. I'm quite sure you don't, and that's the way I wanted it to be. Well, what am I going to do now? I just had a horrible thought. Billy's alone, and you're alone. Does that give you any ideas? Yeah, it sure does. Poor thing. (laughs) Don't mention it. Now that we're home, does your face feel better, George? It's uh, still there, isn't it? Yes, it's still there. Well, then it feels better. It was all my fault, Susan. I made a mess of everything. No, no, it was my fault. Oh, I can't tell you how sorry I am. Well, no, forget it. Next time I go to a box supper, I'll start saving up five years ahead. Uh, patient get home yet? No, not yet. Sammy's bringing you home. Wasn't she wonderful? Yeah, great girl, patient. <laughs> the way she handled everything. Got us out of all that trouble. She's real special. Yeah. Some people are born to get into trouble, and other people are born to get them out of it. Excuse me, George. Hello? Uh, Miss Susan? Well, Patience, where are you? You know Sammy's hot rod. Well, I've heard of it. Did you ever think it would go 70 miles an hour? No. That's what we tried to tell the cop, but he was stubborn. Patience, where are you? In the cooler. They're a little stuffy about bail. Do you think you and George could... Yes, Patience, yes, of course. We'll be right down. Just stay there. That will be no trouble at all. George, we have to go to the police station. Patience and Sammy are in jail for speeding. In jail? I've never have been through such an evening in my whole life. Susan, I have just one question. With all the trouble they caused, will someone please tell me how box suppers ever became so popular? (laughs) 
Our two stars, Irene Dunn and Fred McMurray, will be back with us in just a moment. Sent for me, boss lady? Oh, yes, George. I was wondering if you saw this. I happened to notice it in the morning's edition. Uh, what's that? Under marriage licenses. Willie Hopkins and Wanda Finnegan. No kidding. <laughs> well, that certainly happened fast. <laughs> I just hoped that what I told Willie wasn't the cause of this. Uh, what'd you tell him? Well, I told him that Wanda was a very wealthy girl. Was that wrong, do you think? Well, no, I don't think so. Because I did the same thing. You did? Yeah, I told Wanda that Willie was really loaded. <laughs> oh, George. Oh, what'll happen when they find out the truth? Well, yeah, they'll still have each other. <laughs> you know, playing Cupid really becomes you, George. Well, thank you. Oh, well, anything for charity. <laughs> <laughs> George, have you ever heard that charity begins at home? What? Oh. Come here. There, that's my first contribution. Thank you, George. Irene Dunn and Fred McMurray will be back next week in another exciting comedy adventure in the gay new series, Bright Star. This is Wendell Niles inviting you to join us then. <laughs> <laughs>